Hi, this is Chrissy from the Uncommon Ground and welcome to today's SharpSpring training. Today we're going to talk about automations. SharpSpring allows you to create powerful automations based on your lead's behavior. The automations in SharpSpring are comprised of workflows and of action groups, which themselves are comprised of various actions or events. There are millions of different combinations of automations that you can create for your company, anything from marketing, of course, to administrative tasks. For example, when you make a sale, you can also have warranty information that's automatically sent to a customer. And then a customer satisfaction survey afterwards, uh, two weeks later, or three weeks or a month later. Using automations, you can also create courses. You can do employee onboarding. You can uh, do uh, distributor training. There are countless ways that you can use automations in SharpSpring. So just remember that when dealing with automations, be aware that any new automation won't trigger retroactively. So it won't fire based on changes made through imports or bulk editing. The trigger will only fire for leads who meet the criteria at the time that the trigger is activated. So it's not going to retroactively trigger things that have happened in the past. It starts the second that you activate it. So here we go. We're going to go through, uh, through an overview of making automations. So here you can see the automations tab and you'll see visual workflows and action groups. So visual workflows are triggered based on behavior. Action groups, you can apply an action group within a visual workflow, which is behavior based, or you can schedule an action group to happen. An action group can be applied to a list or it can be put into a visual workflow. So uh, we'll go through what that all means now. So let's go into visual workflows. So in the company Coffee Matico, we, uh, we've made a couple landing pages, we've made uh, some forms and we've made some emails. So those are the building blocks. Within the automation, we have to put all of that together so that it makes sense. So we're going to create a visual workflow and we're going to call it new customer. So you have to always start with the trigger. So what is going to trigger this automation? And as you can see, there are so many ways that you can trigger this, this automation. So we're going to trigger it by when the contact has the field and we're gonna enter the field name, product. When this contact has in the field product and has the field Coffee Matico high volume brewer exactly. So that means when somebody purchases this product and uh, and has that field what's going to happen we choose an action send the email thank you for your purchase we can wait until next next available business hours if we'd like hit okay so when somebody purchases and has that trigger the coffee matico high volume brewer it's going to send them an email. Thank you for your business. And then if you remember when we created those emails on landing pages, that email sends to a landing page, which, which asks them to fill out a warranty form. So we're also going to do another action. We're going to add, we're going to change the contact status because now they're not just a lead, they're actually a contact. So hit okay, because now, they're, now they've purchased from us, they're no longer a lead. And we'll also add them to a list called all customers. You can see there's our, our very first automation. And when we're ready, we can hit activate. We'll also move it to a folder. We're going to make a new folder called customers. It's really important to keep everything organized within SharpSpring. It's easy to just keep everything in the miscellaneous folder and not be able to find anything. So make sure that you have a good method for keeping these folders all organized. Now we're going to create an action group. So here, here we have one here already that is assigned contact status. Um, we're going to create another and we're going to call it assign new lead owner. Now this is something that I want to be able to do manually. We're going to make it available in the contact manager and we're going to make it repeatable. 
So what I want for this action group is I want to be able to take a customer or a lead and I want to assign it to someone. And because this is manual, we don't need a trigger. So in an action group, there's no trigger. We decide when we want to put this action group into action. So we're going to assign contact owner and we're going to assign it to Tom Jones. We're going to override the existing contact owner and hit OK. So now you can see that it's active We're here. Again, we're going to make a new folder. So always go into move and then add new folder. And we're going to call this lead owner actions. So you can see it's right in here now. We'll close up this folder. So now if I want to schedule this, we hit this and we schedule. We can do it right now or we can schedule it at a certain date and time. And what we're going to do is I will show you at the moment there are a bunch of people assigned to Tom Jones. So you'll see if we go over to contacts and contact manager, you'll see that the lead owner is Bob Smith on all of these leads. So now we want to go to action group, lead owner actions, assign new lead owner, and we're going to schedule this as soon as possible. And we're going to choose which list we'd like to schedule for, and we're gonna go all customers and okay. So you can see here the action group is processing. And when we go back to contact manager, you can see that the lead owner has now been changed to Tom Jones. So it's that easy to make bulk edits, I guess, to your list, you can call it, um, and that's manual. So like I said, if it's an action group, you're manually doing it or else it's time-based and a visual workflow is based on a trigger, which is a behavior. So uh, you can make visual workflows even based on website visits. When you start thinking through what automations you wanna make, feel free to contact us. We can help you walk through them and make sure that you're thinking of the proper flow and we can help you and give you some tools as to how to create your workflows so that they uh, not only make sense, but you're not adding extra work or um, make sure you're thinking through the whole process. At The Uncommon Ground, that's what we're all about, process-focused marketing, and uh, we, are, we look forward to helping you whenever we can. So if you have any questions about automations, feel free to contact us whenever you'd like. Have a great day.